So hi and welcome to this first video in the series of videos exploring the product Net Support School. Uh, as you can imagine, we absolutely love this product and uh, it gives so many opportunities for supporting teaching and learning in the classroom. In this introductory video, we're going to show you how to get into Net Support School. Uh, you may notice a few icons related to it on your desktop. You're going to be looking for the one which says uh, Net Support School Tutor Console. So uh, to get started, what we'll do is we'll just simply double click onto here and you're presented straight away with uh, a bunch of options, three options. And as the icons denote, um, each uh, of these three options gives you more features and functionality. So depending on your confidence levels with the product, uh, you'll probably want to start off, which is where we'll start in a moment, is, is some of the, our favorite features and functionalities inside Net Support School with some focused features to help get you started. Um, and as we progress through the video, so we'll then look at the primary features in this sort of uh, intermediate option here, and then we'll jump into the full suite of features uh, over here. But to get started, uh, we'll first of all jump into these focused set of classroom features to get started. We click onto here, and uh, we'll know straight away, no, straight away uh, we're asked to fill in some information. Okay, so you can see I've been in before. It's got my name there already. Um, it's got my lesson there already. And you can type in whatever you want into the lesson title area. Uh, it could be um, that you've got a different class. It could be that you want to use uh, a class code from uh, your MIS, your Management Information System. Uh, so it could be like you know, 10 EN1, let's say, if you're an English teacher, and it's your first set, let's say. So once you've filled in that information, all you then need to simply simply do um, is go and choose which uh, area you want to go to. We're going to go to room one. Uh, so I'm going to select that. And I want to collect the names of the pupils, the students uh, inside my class. Um, from when I last used this, um, I've got this option to get student names. So that's already checked for me. There are some additional options inside here. Uh, we can uh, add some new things in over here. And we can remove some of these connections if we want to. That will have been probably set up for you. So probably best to not fiddle around with those things we can also from here power on uh, devices should you need to as well but we're going to go straight into OK so I click on to OK and what we see then is it looks for uh, machines uh, in the room and uh, as it switches now uh, on the screen you'll better see uh, on the student screen it's asked for the students name so I'm just going to jump onto the other device and I'll pop in a student name Now, um, you can see I've typed that in there. I'm going to hit OK in just a second. OK. Um, and it, it's got some um, things it's pulled from the client. It's already telling me what devices they are and what the logged on username is and their first names and stuff. OK. Um, I'm going to just hit OK on the student screen now. And that will then update automatically on this screen here. So it's then changed to see Bob and Smith. If I go on to the other screen, uh, you can't see this one, but I'll just put in another student over here. Let's call them uh, Amanjeet uh, Singh, let's say. Uh, hit OK on there, and that then updates on here as well. We're now good to go. We hit close, and then we get a bunch of options, which we'll dive into in just a moment. So here we are still in easy mode. We've managed to get ourselves on. We've gathered our um, pupil, our student names. And here we are in the easy mode console. As you can see, there's a variety of things uh, giving us information. Uh, we can uh, see, for example, there are two students in my class. If only I had classes with two students, eh? Um, we can see how long my lesson's been going on for. If I'm running a language lab, I can mute the audio on, on people devices if I want to. If I haven't already got them, I can go and get student names. I can also end the class. If I'm stuck, I can also actually go into here. If I click on here, it'll load up uh, a web browser and take you through to the help page where you can find out more about easy mode if you wanted to do that. And uh, 
if I wanted to end the lesson, I can obviously just clip, uh, quit the uh, tool completely there. That would both end the class and quit the console for me. Well, notice this little, uh, these little three lines up here, often called a waffle or a burger. If I click onto here, we can see we've got uh, options for um, how the interface looks. And we can also go into the theme and make it uh, light or dark or change the colors, depending on what we need for our, our accessibility needs. We've got some other options. Uh, we can do things like lock student screens. So if I click onto here, it will lock uh, the pupil screens. And I just click onto it again to unlock it, and I'll bring the uh, pupil screens straight back. I can blank screens as well. I can block the internet uh, so I can make it so it's a lesson where, uh, let's say I'm delivering a test or something like that, where I don't want students to have access to anything on the internet, and then I can block their internet. And I can also take the temperature of learning or well-being in the classroom very simply using the feedback and well-being option here. Now, I can write a question in here, but often we'll be using things like NetSupport School actually inside a classroom environment. So I'm not going to type a question here. I'm just going to ask a question. Uh, so, you know, I've just taught you something. Um, and rank your confidence one to five, with one being I really don't get it, and five, I, I'm highly confident. Uh, I choose this option here, and as I scroll through, you'll see there are lots of other options, and it could be linked to well being, it could be linked to how students are feeling, uh, so forth and so on. You can use it in a variety of ways. Um, what's nice about it is that you can choose how you use it, but the breadth of uh, icons that are there, uh, and it's the icons in each row that will then be displayed onto a uh, pupil's device. Uh, so I'm gonna choose the one I used previously, which is the five stars here. And so I've chosen that. I can choose to anonymize results. I'm not, I'm going to leave that open for now. I'm gonna click OK. So I asked my class, so, you know, we, we just learned about this particular thing, whatever it is, uh, how rank your confidence one to five, uh, one being I don't get it and five being I'm highly confident. And as the pupils uh, sort of click onto their options, uh, so we can see those then appear and they uh, sort of concatenate depending on the row here in this chart mode, or we can see them in, uh, uh, alternatively as a list like so. From here, if you wanted to, we could even print these results and we can save them. You can see the file types are uh, image generative files. We can just give it a file name and save that if you wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to save it. Um, but that should give you a good overview uh, of the different features and functionalities in the um, easy mode console for Net Support School. So welcome to this next video in the series of uh, tutorials. In this one, we're going to explore the intermediate mode in Net Support School. Uh, to do that, we simply do as we did before. We're going to search out the Net Support School tutor icon on our desktop, and then we're simply going to double click on it like so. As before, we're presented with three options with our easy mode, our intermediate mode, and our advanced mode. So we're going to dive straight into the intermediate mode just here with all of the primary features used in the classroom. So we do this uh, with a single click and up it all comes. And in a few moments, you'll see uh, a similar option screen uh, window as that which we saw in the easy mode. We're asked to give some information. There's a few more things in here. We can put some start and end times to our lesson, uh, but it's very, very similar look and feel with uh, requesting similar information to what we were asked for before. I'll ask you for your name and your lesson title or your class or whatever it is you want to put in. Now, I'm just going to put in, uh, now this is year seven uh, biology again. Let's stick with the uh, biology theme. Uh, I'm going to choose my classroom and I'm going to say uh, my objectives are something to do with, and you would obviously write better um, uh, objectives and outcomes uh, than this, um, but this will do for this example. So I pop some information into here, I choose the room that I'm in, and I simply go to OK. As before, there are some similar options. I'm going to create a student register, for example. I'm going to hit now OK. Do that, and it will find the computers in the room, and it's this option now for registering students. Um, if you look onto one of these student devices, you can see it here in the thumbnail. 
and uh, we can maybe flip over to one of the student screens now. You'll see the student screen now has a toolbar on it. It's got the class name, uh, where it is, who the teacher is. And this is the Nesport School toolbar, which has a whole bunch of information uh, in there. The time, the device that they're using, the class, their teacher, and a whole bunch of other uh, features up here, which we'll go through in some more detail uh, later on but jumping back into my teacher console I can now choose to register the class if I want to uh, and I can choose what things uh, are sort of collated as part of that uh, registration okay uh, I'm just going to stick with first name and surname and when I click on to register um, on the student screen uh, you'll now see and you can see in the th again see in the thumbnail uh, you'll also see on the student screen as I enter uh, the student name again just give them a first name of, let's call it uh, Bob uh, Smith. Press return. Bob Smith is now populated just here. I'll just pop in another name on the other device. Like so. Hit OK. I can see now that both of my pupils are uh, registered. And I can just close that away now. Uh, I can save that register if I want to as a CSV file uh, into my folder. I can also choose to show printer usage, which, which is particularly good uh, in classrooms where some of your students, and I've had those classes myself, uh, who can be a little bit uh, trigger happy, shall we say, <laughs> with the printing options. And there are printing uh, guardrails in Nesport School to help with these sort of things, which we can look at later. Um, I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to cancel that for now. And I'm now into my console. I'm going to make it nice and big to fill the screen. And we're now going to have a little explore of um, the interface here uh, in intermediate mode. There are some things you'll probably recognize from easy mode, like the feedback and well-being option just up here. But obviously, there's an awful lot more going on here than there is in the, inter uh, in the easy mode. I say there are some things which are similar, like feedback and well-being, the fact you can lock and unlock devices, so forth and so on. But we can do an awful lot more in this view. And bear in mind, um, you know, um, on this is a ribbon style um, presentation. So uh, whilst we can do things uh, with our clients um, uh, from the list that is on this ribbon here, we've also got things for options for grouping. Uh, we've got uh, options for selecting different views for um, thumbnails and, and sorry, settings for different thumbnails so you can see their current applications, what websites they're on, um, look what we can see when they've requested help. Um, if in some classrooms as well, they're set up with um, dual monitors so you can uh, have an option to show all monitors as well. And then you've got view options here as well. Personally, uh, large icons or details view on some of these other uh, views that we've got available to us, um, such as the uh, internet and um, uh, application views here in survey and uh, printing and what have you. Uh, when we're in these views here, for example, I personally prefer to have it on a view which is uh, detailed so I can see as much information as possible. But you might just prefer just to have you know, icons like this showing the list of all the names where you can hover over uh, an icon, an avatar for a person, and then see what they've got going on uh, on their device. You can see lots of information from these hoverovers as well. As you can see from this one here, for example, you can see they've got a presentation open within Edge. Um, they're using PowerPoint online. Uh, they're connected to a network. They're on charge. They've got 100% charge on their device. All these different things. But let's just jump back. I'm going a bit uh, ahead of myself here. So let's just go back to class and into our main... Uh, monitoring of student devices view. There are many ways to skin a cat, so to speak, uh, and there are ways in which you can do lots of things actually um, in, in different ways. So for example, I can, you know, I can select uh, one screen here and just lock that particular one, but I could also right click and lock it. There are lots of right click options and things available to us as well. Uh, I'm not going to dive into everything. I, I would seriously recommend you explore the interface. But let me just go through uh, a few of these options that are available to us. So we've got the student register. And if you click on the drop down, you can see we've got a bunch of things that we can do here. We can pull the register. We can get a regi uh, registration report. We can sign out. Um, we've got some action options available to us that come up once we've selected one of our thumbnails. Notice it's grayed out until you actually select a um, device. 
Um, control click is an option as well. I've only got two students in my classroom, but if you had uh, multiple students, uh, if you click on one, let's say you've got uh, three um, students who finish work and you want to send them some extension work, let's say, you could click and then press control on your keyboard and then just select the others wherever they are uh, and send messages or send files or these are different things uh, using that sort of functionality. So you've got the actions section here. You can lock and unlock uh, uh, devices. Uh, a lovely feature, well, there's two lovely features here actually, um, both related to uh, teaching and learning. And, and I would suggest uh, a bit of uh, um, supported sort of digital cognition, um, so helping students focus themselves when they need to be focused on certain things. So let's say I wanted to stop my class um, and show them something um, uh, of notes from uh, a resource that was on my device. I can click on the show and I can um, easily uh, show my desktop to all students. Okay, so it could be that I want to enable that audio during the show. Um, I can, uh, even though devices might be locked, uh, I can keep create a replay file of the show for the students. Um, I can only allow access to approved websites during a show, you know, so forth and so on. It's a yeah, really, really, really uh, lovely feature. If you go into more, uh, there are some more options in here as well where you can sort of change your various settings. Uh, you can change your sort of color depths, uh, so forth and so on. And you might find on your network setup, uh, a lower resolution might be better, but you might have a high uh, spec network that facilitates you know, sort of high definition and, and what have you. Um, I would suggest um, you know either have a little play and see what works best for you in your setting, uh, or if you need some extra help, speak to your um, IT team who will be able to uh, best uh, advise you on which of the best options to uh, use there. So just cancel that away. So you've got some great options here in the show uh, option here. Uh, we can also uh, go across here and we can see we've got um, uh, web access options. Uh, click on the drop down and you can see we've got unrestricted. And if you have approved and um, restricted um, uh, websites um, set up, uh, then you can, um, those will be ungraded, those, those have been filled in. And I'll show you where you do that in just a second. Uh, or you can restrict all websites. Okay. You can, if you want to, at the beginning of the day, power on. You could also power off devices, maybe for lunchtime or end of school. Uh, you can also log devices in and log them out. You can start a chat with a client that you've actually selected. Um, you can um, do that and, and have a conversation with them. Uh, and on their devices, and I'll demonstrate this in more detail later on, uh, students can invoke a uh, or request to chat in there as well. Similarly, like we had before, um, in the easy mode, we've got the feedback and well-being option. And you can also send short messages to a client. So let's say, for example, Bob. I can see here that Bob's doing something he shouldn't be doing. I can send a virtual <coughs> to uh, Bob or uh, whatever it is you want to say to Bob. Um, let's say you've, you've noticed a pro problem with that, uh, with something they've typed. And as a typo, or they're not doing something quite right, you'll give them some quick formative feedback. And you can also do that through the message option there. So that's the first uh, thing on the ribbon here. In, within group, uh, we've got the option to create subgroups. So let's say you've got some um, students in your class that have got English as an additional language that you know during the lesson you're going to have to provide some extra support for. Uh, you can create a group for those. Uh, you can set um, groups for all manner of purposes that best fit your setting uh, with your particular class. Uh, you can choose to group students randomly if you want to and you can have the group bar um, sort of showing or hide uh, or being hidden depending on whether or not you're using groups or not. Um, you've got options to send files. Uh, we've got the message option here again. Uh, you can choose group leaders if you want to and you can do uh, a whole lot of uh, configuration options in here uh, around your group leaders. Should you be doing group work on the um, uh, through Netsport School as well. So a whole bunch of features and options here within the group section. And you know, as you'll be hearing through the conversation, there's so many teaching and learning opportunities with the ways in which we do this. You know, so if you're setting up um, you know, group activities, you're um, doing things virtually in a, in a Hartness model, you know, there, are, there are many ways that you can uh, apply um, the, the, the tool uh, to, to fit the setting uh, with your classroom when you're choosing to use technology. It really is superb.
In the select ribbon, uh, we've got uh, a few options here. Um, you can have different thumbnail views. Um, so you can have you know, higher, uh, medium or lower resolution. We can have real time updates. Personally, if it's available, I like real time because then you can see obviously in real time whatever pupils are doing on their devices at any given time. And then in the view option, uh, you've got um, a whole bunch of options here available to you as well. Now, as we move through these different options down here, so the options up here will change as well. So let's dive into this next one down. I'll turn back into class for a second and then go on to the internet meter and internet controls just here. So I can see that I've got my um, pupils uh, just as avatars. Um, if you if you like it like that, that's absolutely fine. You can go to um, view and change that to details, and so you get more information uh, on on uh, what's uh, visible and uh, what have you here. So you've got large icons. You can still do the group bar and the action bar and these other things uh, in there as well. You got some uh, modes here as well, so you can do monitor view, application view, survey view, print view, and this here is basically an alternate um, version of what you can see uh, down the side over here so um within here we've gone to class we've gone to um and we've seen that group uh, before uh, select but the big one for us uh, that's different now is we can now see the web access options here so this is where we can still again like we've seen in the other view go to unrestricted and restrict all and we can have time limited access and uh, what have you um, but what we want to look at now is our website list and this is where we can set up um and uh, load um, website lists for different purposes. So as a teacher, you'll have multiple classes, and this is where you can, you know, in terms of your planning and preparation, and there might be things on a, that you have sort of set up on a regular basis, uh, specific uh, websites that you want to approve and disapprove and, and so forth and so on. So you can load those up directly from within here. If you want to do things on the fly, uh, then um, you know, your approved websites can be added by simply going to the plus button here and then completing the fields and clicking OK and it will then appear. Similarly with restricted websites on the plus button uh, just here, you can add them in. And that will then open up these options that are greyed out just up here. Okay. Moving down. Uh, to the uh, application view it's a very very similar thing as before the same options for class and group and select and view appear but we're now going to look at the application access and we can again load uh, if you want to existing application lists or we can create a new one and save it as so it might be on a regular basis you want to allow things like powerpoint and excel and word and uh, edge Okay, those are your standard allowed apps. So you can have that in a pre-populated list and you can just load those straight up and use those. Happy days. If there are certain things on a um, less frequent basis, uh, then you can um, add in approved ones manually just here. Or if you want to restrict things, um, let's say Minecraft as an example, uh, you can choose to add those in just there. And again, once you've added those in through the plus buttons here for restricted or here for approved, it's simply just a case of choosing approved only or blocking from the bits just here that are currently greyed out. We have got a survey tool and um, I'm going to run through the survey options a little bit later on. So I'll leave that for now. But this is where we get through to surveys where you can survey uh, pupils within your class. And here are the options uh, around printing and how you allow printing uh, um, with various print thresholds and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, one thing you might like to do um, and with my teacher hat on, I often sort of start from the point of blocking printing um, or having, having it unrestricted. Uh, blocking printing as the default um, and then allow opening it up as a lesson progresses should it be something that you want to actually happen. Although it may well be in your ecosystem, you actually have work submitted digitally, uh, which is obviously a very green approach. Uh, so you can do that there. There are other options uh, around the screen. I'm just going to jump back to the main sort of thumbnail view like this. There are some other options available to us. I'm just going to dive down into the corner over here. Um, if you want to, um, depending on uh, how your class is set up, you know, and how many devices you've got, you can increase and decrease the thumbnail size here. You can go onto auto to automatically size the student screens to fit the window. Uh, you can choose to zoom in. Uh, student windows and there's a, um, a whole bunch of options here for selecting uh, students uh, you can select powered on machines powered off machines so forth and so on and then there's options for um, displaying objects in different ways on your screen 
other information inside here um, you can see displayed uh, just here so you can see there's two students and we'll jump into that option in just a moment and then the final area to look really is up here for lock all so um, you can just quickly go and just lock all the students there if you want to and then unlock uh, you've got the internet option there so you can just block all internet quickly there if you want to uh, there's a lesson timer you can invoke to sort of show how long the lesson's going keep an eye on on all of that sort of thing that runs as standard in easy mode you'll remember seeing hopefully the uh, lesson duration right in the center of easy mode and then um, just here we've got an option to configure the quick access list if you want to and as, a, as in most uh, applications you've got your minimize maximize and uh, uh, close uh, options just up here I did say there was one more option uh, of course there is uh, down here if I go on to room one I can refresh let's say uh, a pupil has arrived late to class just logged in it, their, their device isn't appearing on here simply hit refresh and then that device will then appear into here and then of course if you want to end the class uh, you can simply disconnect the current class and choose a new one by going to end class and there you go intermediate mode in net support school So now that we've had a look at Net Support School in easy mode and intermediate mode, we're going to have a look at how we can get into advanced mode. Now, uh, you can move from intermediate mode into advanced mode from within intermediate mode. So uh, one way you can get in will be to choose the uh, advanced mode from that initial launch screen that you saw when we load uh, the console by double clicking the icon on the desktop. Another way which uh, you can move directly from this um, intermediate um, with, with more, more directly popular, I would say, features of the product. And the, the way you can move from here into the advanced mode would be to go to options over here on the right hand side. So if you go into here, uh, you get a whole bunch of different options uh, that come up for you. You can find out about the software, the license, technical support, statistics, other things. Uh, click on contents and that will open up a uh, browser page with all the um, documentation that uh, uh, surrounds uh, Net Support School from all of your technical support type things to how you use uh, the tool and, and all these different things. You can search within there as well to try and find specific uh, answers to questions if it, they're not covered or uh, you, you didn't see them inside these videos. So you can find that very simply uh, by doing that. Uh, if I turn back into options here a second, you'll also see there's other settings in here and things related to your network settings. Uh, it's likely that in most cases, for most teachers, you wouldn't need to go into here. Okay, but if you want to have a little look around, uh, please have a little look around. Um, but um, it would have been set up for you by your um, uh, your network team. Uh, so that there isn't really any need for you to, to dive into there. But if you want to, by all means, have a little look. But it's in here. Uh, on the reduced interface option uh, we get the focused set of features if you choose the option here you'll then see that it flips over into a much more detailed feature rich um, uh, version of net support school there are many 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 features in net support school and we're going to dive into all of these different features uh, in the rest of this video please use the chapters to help you navigate through to the sections that will be of most use to you um, so here we are now uh, and that's how you move into the more advanced um, features and functionality if you wanted to switch back into intermediate mode you can do so just by going back to options uh, just up here and then just choosing the reduced interface again Something I just wanted to spend a moment on as well before we um, end this little intermediary section, looking at the intermediate um, uh, sort of setup with these featured uh, sets of features. Um, too many features there. Um, but um, if you click on this little drop down here, you've got these different things that can actually go into a little customizable toolbar area here so you can access these things as well. So uh, clicking here will not lock and unlock all students. Uh, but if you check that, you'll then get the option for a quick lock all. You'll have it here as well as having it over here on the toolbar as well. So there you go, you can add those things in. And just a very quick thing to wrap it up, um, you do have the lesson timer feature here. So you can, um, if you've got it turned on in here, show the lesson timer, uh, you can then click onto here and you can set your lesson 
your timer for 15, 30, 45. Um, or if you want it to be a bespoke uh, number of minutes inside your session, simply go into here and type in the uh, bespoke amount of time that you want. Hit start and then the timer will then appear at the top here doing your little countdown as you can see happening there. So now let's dive into a bit more uh, depth, exploring the advanced modes in Net Support School. So here we are in the advanced mode in Net Support School, and we're going to start to work through now the different sections, uh, features, functionalities inside our multi-featured, rich classroom management tool. The first thing we're going to do is start at the very beginning. On the left hand side here we can see the option for student register. Now there is options around student register when you first log into the product but let's just say you've just uh, signed everybody out and you're in a position where you want to just start uh, a brand new class. So you'll notice uh, the the uh, icon here is just an icon and nothing else. That's important and I'll uh, explain why in just a second. Um, so simply click on to student register and it brings up your student register options here. It's pre-populating information from the last time I used it. So it's got my name in here. Um, it's got the class that I'm running and the objectives for the lesson. Um, obviously, you would say more than this and you probably spell photosynthesis correctly as well. Uh, so I'll fix that whilst I'm talking. Um, I'm going to just going to keep this here because it's just uh, there for uh, example purposes. You could um, gather more information if you wanted to, uh, but I'm just going to stick with first name and surname. And when I hit register, it will then, and you might just hear the little notice uh, on the devices which are near me. If we just switch to this device here, uh, I can just pop in a student name very quickly. And you can now see um, that name now appears on the um, student uh, toolbar, which is here, running here at the top. Uh, Bob Smith appears here. And if we jump back onto the teacher console, uh, we can see that it's appeared inside this window here. Uh, let's just add in another student a second over here. They've now appeared in my area just here. And then what's, what's useful with this is that, um, you know, it enables you to see um, the names of all of the students on the dashboard in front of you. Um, it, depending on which view you're in, I mean, it's nice with a thumbnail view, but whatever the view is, it's, it's likely it's not representative of your classroom uh, and your sort of seating layout with all of your different devices there. So it's super useful so you can quickly see in a, in a heartbeat, um, you know, which student is where, which student's doing what, uh, so forth and so on. Okay, I can see that uh, Amanjit hasn't really got started yet. Uh, Bob's already sort of cracking on with his work on photosynthesis. He can spell photosynthesis correctly, clearly. Uh, when you're done, um, you can... I've already got the auto save register there, so that's already saved for me. Um, I don't need to do the register again. I can just now just click close. Uh, my students are registered. It does give me the opportunity to save uh, that register I want to. I'm not going to save it at this point. Uh, but I'm going to leave the show printer usage thing there checked, and you'll see why in just a second. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel that. Now, remember I said um, about the icon in the top left-hand corner. Can you now see there's a little drop-down icon um, right here in the thumbnail? If I click there now, it doesn't bring up the register to... Um, have students register we get a bunch of options now so I can get a registration report uh, so I can get that information I can actually uh, quickly print it out if I want to I can actually send that student register to the tutor journal as well uh, or if it's the end of the session I want to get ready for my next class I could just sign them out to help you see the sort of information which is on side the registration report I'm just going to click on to here uh, a second and this is the sort of thing which can be printed out and can be shared inside the journal as well if it's the end of a session one of the things that I mean it's obviously really good to have the um, student names and the name of the device they were using these things can be helpful for lots of uh, other, other reasons you might want to ask you know students why they're signing in with different names for example if you wanted to uh, I'm sure they would they would probably marry up there but what, the thing I'd have to find really useful um, in my classrooms um, 
historically and if I was still teaching there would be this around what pages how many pages um, students have printed uh, how many jobs have been sent uh, that's really really useful um, as someone who's taught uh, for many years I know that the uh, students can sometimes go a little bit wayward and a bit get a bit trigger happy with their clicking on the print button and it's important they're aware of, of um, all of those things I did share in a, um, an earlier part of this video how you can block printing straight away and that's something that I would recommend that you uh, sort of instill as something uh, um, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, every time you're running a class, you know, have printing turned off and then allow it as is needed to try and keep those costs down. Uh, but um, really useful to have that information on this report anyway. So look, there you have it. Uh, I'll just close that down now because I'm ready to crack on with my lesson. But um, we were looking at student register and that's how you do a student register and how you access the information beyond. And don't forget, end of your lesson, just click on to sign out to sign out your students. OK, so look, one of the things that you're going to want to do most frequently uh, with this tool, uh, with Net Support School, is viewing your student screens. Let's face it, you want to be making sure that they're cracking on and doing the things you want them to be cracking on and doing. And that's where NetSupport School really does come into its own. Obviously, there's the ability to do lots of things to help shepherd uh, your students down the right path by using some of the application controls, some of the uh, web controls to make sure they only use certain websites or certain tools, the things you want them to use. But the reality is you want to be able to A, see what they're doing, okay, and then B, support them while they're doing the things that you want them to be doing. So we've got um, Bob Smith working on his uh, presentation uh, on uh, his device at the moment. We can see there's two slides there. Uh, this is Bob Smith uh, just here. And what I can do is I can just zoom in a bit so I can see the screen a bit more clearly uh, just over here. OK. Um, and in this view, it's nice things, you know, what, what's happening here. In, and as I, if I move my mouse up a second, you know, as um, Bob's doing different things on his device, uh, moving from one sort of slide to the next on his device, uh, so I can see that transition, those things happening and those things changing uh, on the screen. So if I just, you know, start changing a few things over here, uh, you can see what's happening on there. Okay, so what's really, really useful is that not only can I see that in the thumbnail, chances are as well that probably, you know, if you've got, you're not going to have two students, so you're going to be seeing it quite small uh, if you've got a whole group of them. You can see things are happening, but what you can do is you can actually dive into a student's screen uh, and actually see it full screen. And to do that is super, super easy. The quickest way, the way I've always done this, is to just simply double click on the icon that you can see here. You can do it in other views, uh, you know, uh, if you're seeing just the avatar, you can double click and still jump straight into the view. Uh, you can right click and go view client and do that sort of thing. And whilst I'm here, you know, there are other ways you can interact. So let's say, you know, Bob um, has clearly not got the name photosynthesis uh, correct here. We can just go a bit, a bit closer. Okay. Um, so, if I wanted to, if I've noticed that uh, Bob isn't doing something quite right here, I could sort of, you know, call out across the classroom, uh, Bob, you know, have you thought about, you know, and then given Bob that feedback. Uh, it might be, though, that you're working to rules where at certain times when, when your students are focused, it's, it's a silent room while they're focusing on their work. So we can do things such as go into the chat and I can... Um, you know, start a, a chat conversation. I could just message and, and send a message that says to Bob, hey, Bob, have you thought about this, that, or the other, whatever it is. You can choose these options so you can have those uh, means of communication and choose which one sort of, sits, sort of suits you best uh, when you come to do that. But, um, yeah, the, view, the ability to view uh, a student screen is, is super useful and there's the, you know, a variety of ways you can do it. Let's just recap. You can double click and it will bring uh, that up. Uh, alternatively, uh, you can um, right click and go to view clients. And remember, depending on um, which uh, view you're in, doesn't really matter too much. Let's just jump into um, this view, for example. I can still just double click onto here and still get through. And the same is true in other views. And whilst we're here, uh, it's important to notice uh, and note the things you can do once you're viewing 
a student's screen as well. So what I can do is I can just share. Okay, so we can both use the mouse and keyboard at the same time. I can make it so I'm just actually watching it. Or it could be that I want to control that device entirely. So, you know, Bob can be, you know, trying to do things on his device right now. He can't do anything now because I've got full control of that device. What I can also do is um, working across the toolbar here, then so I've got some other options. Uh, I can optimize uh, for color depth and speed or for quality. Uh, I can send control and delete to the client, which could be useful for um, you know, logging students off or a variety of other reasons. I can just blank their screen rather than um, uh, locking it. Uh, sometimes uh, when um, a student is maybe not doing quite the right thing. Okay, we might want to get some evidence of that. So we can always take a screenshot by clicking onto here. Uh, if you click on a drop down, uh, then we can open a folder uh, where we can find those screenshots as well. If it really is needed, I can just log out Bob. I can reboot their device. I can scale to fit. I can go full screen and I can fiddle around with uh, different aspect ratios. Um, go to different screen sc uh, scrapes and co uh, various compatibility modes. Um, I can sort of show or hide the navigation window. I can send uh, things from the clipboard, retrieve things. I can turn it onto it automatically sends and receive uh, sends and receives clipboard contents. If we're working with a copy and paste thing, we can add some quick launch options in here and add some more things into there if we want it as well. Bear in mind as well that we've got other options on, because this is a ribbon interface rather than a menu interface or a standard toolbar, so we go to tools. Uh, we've got things for file transfer and chat and annotations as well, which is really useful. So I can just go on to uh, annotate and uh, then from the annotation tool here, I can then do things with files and, and uh, pens and shapes and colors and fonts and all this sort of stuff directly on the uh, pupil device, student device. Uh, click back onto there and that will turn the annotation feature off. And the final tab here to bring up the final ribbon uh, is to do with communication with the people. So it could be uh, that you've got uh, people in a room and they're wearing headphones and, and working in that sort of way so you can have a variety of conversations. And this is also useful when you've got a setup uh, where people are in different rooms so you can uh, or in different locations so you can uh, have a, a variety of sort of conversations uh, using the audio feature there whilst you're connected uh, with the uh, students or the pupil. Bear in mind you've still got some persistent things as well, muting, locking, internet, all these shortcuts and things uh, persist at the top here as you see in your main window behind just over here. To come out of this view where you're sort of diving onto a, a student screen, simply close the window and you're back where you were originally inside NetSupport School. My favourite view, uh, and we'll dive into the different views you've got in a few moments, but my favourite one, again, because most of the time what you can want to be doing is actually monitoring what students are doing in the classroom, is this view here where you can see the thumbnails so you can see what's going on. So that is how you view a student screen in NetSupport School. It's fair to say that, that, that there are lots of favorite features from our schools uh, when it comes to uh, their use of NetSupport School. But one of the favorite features for teaching and learning activities is this uh, feature here of show. So yeah, People do love the ability to see student screens and it's great for behavior for learning and keeping students on track and being able to see where you know, feedback might be needed in the moment, uh, formative uh, feedback. Uh, but the show option is super useful. Now, um, if I click onto it here just now, if you're um, users of the previous version of NetSupport School, you might be wondering, well, where's the exhibit option down the bottom? Don't worry, uh, it is still there. Just simply select the students uh, that you wish to exhibit and then go back to show and then the exhibit option is there um, don't worry uh, alternatively you know you can right click and uh, exhibit and things as well but we'll talk about those more in just a second 
Okay, uh, so the show feature enables you to share, essentially share your screen onto the screens of others within your classroom. Uh, it could be that you want to do that on a per student basis for a group of students, uh, um, a select group or to the entire class. Uh, to do this, we simply go to show and there's a variety of options here available to us. There's quick show, there's show video, so you can show a video to the current uh, clients. Uh, you can show a replay file, and we'll talk about replay files in a second. Uh, you can um, record a local activity to a replay file if you wanted to do that just to yourself, uh, and then share it later on with your students. You can show a specific application you have open to the students. Um, and there are, there's some variables that you can tweak down the bottom here um, linked to the activities that you do. So it could be that you turn on audio during the show, so that comes through uh, whatever students see on their screens. Um, student uh, is locked and the show appears in a full screen window. This is a nice one, okay? So it creates a replay file of the show at the students. Now, Let's just do these other ones here a second. I'll, I'll talk about why this replay file and, and doing this is, is, is a great idea. Okay, uh, This one here only allows access to approved websites during the show. So if you wanted students to um, you know, do some things alongside uh, what you're doing, to do some research whilst you're talking, then you might allow that to be there. And there's some more options in here so you can change things around the depth of quality and the hotkeys you're using and uh, so forth and so on. Okay, So some extra options in there. But let's just go back here a second and talk about this create a replay file of the show at the students. Whether you're thinking about direct instruction or thinking around some of the concrete examples you might be sharing, exposition and teacher talk is a standard part of most teachers' practice in a classroom. What happens though when a student forgets what you've told them? Well, thing is what's going to happen is sir how do I do this again how many times you know do you have to go back to students and explain things that you've already explained now sometimes that's because the way you've explained it hasn't been very good you know we can we can you know, there's lots of uh, conversation around you know how best to explain things and and uh, we're not going to dive into all of that right now however the ability for a student to go back and see what you've explained previously is super useful. Equally, if you've got some students in the room um, who may struggle to see, to see uh, what you're presenting or showing or talk, talking about at the front of the class, you know, uh, from the back of the class for, for visual reasons, or maybe there's, a, there's an obstruction. In my one of my former classrooms, for example, um, I had some pillars in the way. Um, student chairs weren't necessarily facing that sort of way because of the layout of the classroom, so forth and so on. So the ability to have something in front, you know, as an accessi accessibility feature in and of itself, it's really, really useful. But if you then tie in this replay file and the ability that you can send those into the um, sort of lesson journal feature within Export School, so students can easily access this stuff beyond your original exposition, then you've got a really powerful tool to support your uh, work in the classroom, saving you as well the ability to have to go back and repeat these things to uh, some students who perhaps weren't quite paying enough attention when you explained it in the first place. Thinking about teaching and learning as well, obviously exhibiting um, the screen of a student to other students gives other opportunities for teaching and learning uh, in uh, teaching and learning within the classroom. So, for example, it could be that Bob here has done some work which, you know, whilst good, um, could do some improvement. So you could right click and go to exhibit and push and that uh, screen to other students in the classroom. You can choose a granular level, uh, whether that's the whole class or certain individuals. Um, again, like I showed a second ago, as long as you've got the students selected here, you can go to show and uh, exhibit. Uh, and it's the same option once it's, you click on here as it is when you click on to here. OK, um, so you could use that for, um, you know, uh, a conversation around how the student could improve it. Um, you could ask students to collectively assess it and mark it and grade it and then give some feedback. You could talk about um, what the good parts are. Uh, you could do a what went well and even better riff kind of conversation. There are lots of ways in which that is a useful activity um, that could be um, sort of, uh, embedded uh, within your uh, classroom practice. And again, um, you know, very, very popular tool and for obvious reasons, hopefully.
So in this section of the video, I wanted to spend some time talking through how we use the whiteboard feature. Uh, we've just been through the um, showing and sharing of screens and things, but now I wanted to talk about how we can actually collaborate in a space and, and use it for more feedback and uh, conversations around learning and teaching. So to access the whiteboard, simply head to this icon here at the bottom of this list of uh, options. And don't worry, we'll get into the rest of these later on in the video. Don't you worry. But in here, we can use an interactive whiteboard um, with uh, the students in your class. And it's a super easy tool to use, but in, in you know, with lots and lots of different ways in which it can be used. So we first of all click onto here. So that brings up the whiteboard here. And as it's telling us very clearly, uh, it's not currently being shown to the students. That that's fine. Um, to turn on the whiteboard and have it displayed, uh, you must click the show button on the ribbon. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, you might want to turn that off, uh, but it's there as a handy reminder if you need it. So you can see the names of our students on the right hand side. We can see we've got a bunch of things happening here. So we've got some color choices and widths and shapes and uh, tools and things here. We could insert images. This, by the way, is a really great way of doing things like bringing through like past paper questions where you might have it, have it saved as a cropped image, something from you know, your snipping tool or something. Um, and if we do later on and want to start again, we can clear the whiteboard very quickly by clicking on to clear whiteboard. We can change the canvas size and so forth and so on. But what we're going to do, right, first of all, is just go to show. And uh, we've been doing some simple math in my class. So I'm just going to write on here, uh, you know, some really uh, difficult sums, uh, 2 plus 2. So I could do that and I'm saying, right, OK, um, uh, Amanjeet, uh, I'd like you please to um, answer that question for me. So I can get Amanjeet to work on that in one of two ways. I can either click on their name and then go to give control, or I can go back to their name here and just right click and choose give control there. And once I've done that, Amanjeet on their device can just simply, you know, thinks it maybe change the color um, and uh, sort of the, the width of the response and put in their answer. And unfortunately, um, Amanjeet has got it wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say, that's not quite correct there, Amanjeet. Well done, good try, but not quite what we were after. So what I'd like now is to switch that control over to Bob. Bob, could you have a go instead, please? And so Bob can go here, he can change his color. Uh, he's going to choose that color. He's going to make the width like that. Can you just scrub it out for me, please, uh, Bob? Yeah, thank you, Bob. And could you now just write the correct answer in, please? Uh, if you do know what it is, that's very good. Then you can have a whole conversation uh, about how that was worked out. You maybe sort of have a bigger conversation around it. Obviously, this can uh, be used in many, many different ways. Once you've finished, um, jump back on here now um, onto the teacher console um, for the video and just go back and take control away and if you want to start again you just simply go to clear whiteboard don't worry as well this is all still on student screens the show is still turned on i'm just taking control back myself we do actually have some more space down here so i could carry on doing some writing you know in, in what have you in the space down here if you want to start again though just simply go to clear whiteboard and away you go but if you wanted to as well you could just save that whiteboard just for references and pop it into the student journal. Um, but for now, we're just going to clear that whiteboard. And when you've finished uh, doing the whiteboard activity with your class, it's just a case of just going to show, clicking onto it again, and that will turn it off uh, at the students and they can then carry on uh, with the work they were doing in class. And that is how you use the whiteboard feature in Net Support School. So it is an unfortunate uh, thing in schools that children don't often behave themselves. And, you know, as a teacher, we've got a whole variety of um, interpersonal skills uh, that we can use with young people, reinforced by school policy, obviously, uh, to help deal with poor behaviour. Um, now, often children can display, you know, behaviours that we don't want to see uh, when it comes to their use of technology as well. So um, it's great that we've got these you know, non-digital uh, approaches we can use with young people, but equally we want to have some, uh, uh, some tools at our disposal uh, to help us when children do things they shouldn't be doing uh, when using technology as well. So uh, a really simple thing that we can do with young people if they are uh, going off task is use some of the features of NetSupport uh, School. And uh, 
but as as luck, well, not lucky, is it? Um, but as as luck would have it, I can see uh, the old uh, Bob Smith over here is starting to go off task a bit. He's looking at uh, what appears to be a Hey Dougie paddling badge game. Well, I want to deal with Bob and and what he's doing. So uh, there's a variety of things we can do. But the first thing I'll do in the first instance really is is stop Bob from being able to access this. All right, he should be doing his work on photosynthesis. This is absolutely not what we should be doing. Uh, so I can do one or two things in terms of locking his device down, so I can then go and have a conversation with him about what it is that he's doing. So I can firstly uh, uh, select his screen like so, and I can go to lock, uh, and that would lock uh, his specific machine. I could right click as well and uh, lock it from here as well. Uh, so uh, it's different ways we can do the same sort of thing there. It could be that I could just send actually just a little message and say, hey, Bob, come on. Keep on focus, please, and close that down. Equally, you know, I could front load my lesson. Um, we'll be looking at this in more detail in just a few uh, sh uh, short videos, a uh, short time later on in this video, looking at how we can set specific websites that uh, children can only use uh, during the class. But let's say it's open access uh, at the moment. Uh, so let's just say I'm going to lock the screen. This is what this section is about. So uh, I would just simply go to lock and that would lock that screen. And um, I'm about to uh, sort of leave my chair and go over uh, and speak to uh, Bob who's doing that. And then I notice that uh, oh, Cracky Amanjeet's trying to get on Facebook now. So you know, clearly, we'll have to have a conversation because this is a year seven class, so I don't want Amanjeet to be uh, um, using Facebook full stop anyway. So again, I can right click and lock or I can just select and just go to lock uh, just here. Well, in my very small classroom, you know, let's jump forward a few minutes. I've had a conversation with uh, uh, with Amanjeet and with um uh, with Bob and I can just go straight to unlock don't select any of these and uh, I can just simply unlock them let's say that um, you know um, Bob's had to go off now he, he's actually been quite naughty uh, says some things uh, he's not he's not been the best version of himself shall we say uh, he's had to go off what I can do is I can actually then do things like he's, he's now left the classroom I can just uh, unlock his device I can then do things like log his machine off uh, I can do that during uh, using the sort of administration tools uh, just here I could just uh, power the machine down I could do a whole bunch of things around that I'm not going to because obviously this is just a demonstration video um, but um, yeah absolutely controls here so that we can you know help keep the the learning that should be taking place uh, in class taking place and keep students focused on their job of learning in the classroom and that's how you lock and unlock screens in net support school So in this section of the video, we're going to look at um, students' access to uh, websites and uh, apps. Okay, And there are two main ways in which we can deal with that. Way one is to um, set things up in our um, application and internet controls um, here on the left-hand side. Um, what we can do in here for example, um, is um, we can set up approved websites. Here's one on bite-side photosynthesis, for example. Uh, I could have restricted websites, like everything under the sun if you wanted, or specific ones if we know about it, and so forth and so on. Okay. And if, if we want the people to only work on, on here, then what we can do is we can just say approved only. So the only websites uh, that students and pupils can access is simply this particular um, uh, website. OK, it helps keep them focused and in one particular place and space. And that's really good. OK, in a similar way, if you only want uh, students for whatever reason to only be using a specific tool and then we can do a similar sort of thing uh, by going over to here and clicking on the plus button and then popping in the file name of the of the file. So it could be like word.exe. Uh, for, for Word, for example, okay, uh, you can pop a description in here and that will be what appears um, down the bottom here. And then what we do for that, uh, same sort of thing uh, as we do with the um, uh, restrictions um, on, on here where we have unrestricted. Uh, in here, where we would just choose to have um, you know, uh, restricted 
cats currently see it on approved only at the moment because uh, we don't have any uh, approved or restricted applications. But that's how you do it. And you do it the same way uh, with blocked as we do it with um, approved. Okay. Um, so that's really, really great, and it's fantastic, particularly for those uh, uh, sort of scenarios where um, you know you need to lock students out of specific things, maybe in an exam test sort of scenario. Okay, uh, but another um, um, uh, way in which uh, um, we can use this sort of tool is around giving access to websites on the fly. Sometimes we need to get all of our learners onto a specific website now. Just gonna, there are two ways of doing this as well, really, because if you have got your approved uh, list and websites, you'll have noticed the um, student toolbar. Uh, if I jump onto this student machine here for a second, uh, we can see on here the uh, internet status, and it'll tell us in there uh, what the, um, um, the websites are if we choose uh, to to make them uh, approved only and, and uh, all these different things, okay? Um, but one of the things which is a real pain is when you want all of your students to go to a particular website at a particular time. And I, I remember vividly, you know, writing a, a URL that I wanted my students to go to. Often it was quite a long URL. It wasn't just a domain. It was a like forward slash this, forward slash that, so forth and so on. Um, inside um, Nesport School, we've got a fantastic feature called Quick Launch. OK, so with Quick Launch, what you can do is you can essentially um, force uh, a website or an application to automatically open on their device. Uh, most use case scenarios for this one is with the websites. Uh, but again, you know, rather than waiting for, you know, what sometimes felt like a year for every child to get to the same place, everyone on the same website. Uh, with this, we need to simply go to Quick Launch. Uh, we just go to Add URL. Um, we can pop the URL in here. Uh, here's one I found earlier. Um, put in a description. Uh, we'll call it um, um, photosynthesis. Um, and you'll be aware of uh, assessment as learning uh, as a strategy and technique, uh, I'm sure. Um, so this uh, website here is one which um, has, has got a series of questions around the topic of photosynthesis from uh, I think from uh, Britannica um, and so if I do send to students now um, that will send that to them and it will make uh, the website automatically appear uh, on and you can see they're both there here now look see both loading up onto uh, both of my um, students devices and the student can then just give themselves the if you jump onto the student machine for a second uh, just accept that I hit the um, sort of start button here and now my students can go through and answer questions uh, what is the main purpose of photosynthesis uh, to produce carbon dioxide okay oh no I got it wrong there's the right answer if I was to be asked that question again I'd probably remember it because I can see the wrong answer that's what assessment as learning is right so yeah multiple ways to do similar things OK, um, but it's important, you know, how to do all of them. Really, really useful. And another great feature um, tied into Net Support School, that is the quick launch feature and then the ability to um, uh, add approved and uh, sort of restricted uh, websites and applications as well. Just a quick note whilst we're in here as well, uh, we do have um, a variety of toolbar options uh, that appear with the web access and with the uh, application access once we're actually in these places and spaces. Please note that other things that we've, we've been through and talked about before, okay, uh, appear up here as standard as we have on most of the toolbars, uh, most of the ribbons, sorry, here across the top. Okay, so there you go. There is quick launch and the um, application control and the web control features in Net Support School. So if you're in an IT suite, it's very likely that um, you know, a lot of your uh, students in the room uh, will have access to some kind of desktop device. And many desktop devices come with CD, DVD, uh, drives, um, on occasion Blu-rays. Um, but um, they'll have those sort of things on them often. Um, they'll also often have uh, USB um, ports on them as well for... Uh, plugging in devices and all this sort of thing, but it does open up vulnerabilities to those devices. So uh, to help with that, uh, NetSupport School does have some safety features built in. On the left hand side here, we have our navigation to our different sort of um, sections of the product. 
and one just here um, which looks like a USB stick in fact uh, is where you can con control audio USB CD and DVD devices so um, if you click onto here and you'll um, have the uh, avatars for your individuals in the classroom don't select any of them if you want to granularly apply controls uh, then you can obviously select um, or control click to uh, do the granular selection but we'll click away from all of those and over here on the toolbar we'll see we've got the options for access to usb dvd cd uh, mute sound or unmute sound uh, enable a webcam disable webcam so you've got these opportunities to uh, sort of control uh, what um, the different uh, machines within inside your uh, class uh, can have access to so for example USB if I want to uh, make it uh, completely blocked access then choose block access uh, we get a little icon which represents that as well we do that so we can also uh, then make it blocked access uh, for CDs and we can see the updated icon there as well we can mute sound another update to the icon there uh, we could also disable uh, the webcam although there's no actual iconography for that just there and then let's say that Bob needs to um, this is actually a photosynthesis lesson this is a language lab lesson and if I click onto Bob and then go to unmute sound for Bob that will unmute sound for Bob but leave things muted for Amanjeet like so so we can do it at a granular level or a whole class level and we can control things across USB devices, CD, DVD, uh, muting or unmuting sound as required and enabling and disabling any webcams on devices as well. And that's how you can apply controls uh, to the use of CD, DVD, USB and audio inside your classroom with Net Support School. So I wanted to talk now about um, the keyboard monitoring uh, feature that's built into uh, net support school now this isn't to be confused with any kind of safeguarding software um, that key tracks keywords and, and these sorts of things we do have these sorts of products in fact you may well have net support dna a world-class uh, award-winning product uh, which has safeguarding keyword tracking built right into it um, this isn't about that okay this is about uh, a tracking tool that that, that um, checks for keywords uh, that young people are typing in using their devices that are linked to the learning activities in your classroom quite nifty hey you know in in many classes we will want children to reference keywords uh, in many many lessons uh, in this lesson here now uh, around photosynthesis uh, it may well be that we want children to be using words like photosynthesis and spelling it correctly uh, things like chlorophyll the sun carbon dioxide green uh, these sorts of things oxygen what have you so we can add those things in we can also add in then some inappropriate words uh, it could be words like chlorophyll but spelt incorrectly okay which can then be tracked and flagged and things okay you know, common um, commonly uh, spelt with an F I double L on the end rather than the P H Y double L so how do we get all this sort of stuff set up and how can we make it help us with our learning and how can we then sort of celebrate you know, good work and uh, what have you with with your children in your classroom well it's baked right into this section here with the a that you can see the monitoring real-time keyboard input section just here so we click onto there and we can see there's some things been happening on this keyboard already let's just clear that and start from scratch so um, as with all of these options here we keep a lot of these standard icons on the ribbon uh, uh, straight away but uh, on the right hand side we've got some options linked to this keyboard checking so we can monitor activity Okay, it's currently um, turned on. Uh, there's no text in there at the moment. I've just cleared that text. Uh, we can view the history of things that have been typed previously. We can obfuscate uh, inappropriate words uh, so we don't have to see those. Um, although in, in this example, you might want to see it so you can see where things have gone wrong. But either which way, they're flagged by the, t the cumulative total here uh, in, in this, these two columns here. We can also, if you want to you know, save and load previous um, word lists or create word lists uh, linked to learning activities if you want to here. But it's easy to do on the fly, okay? So you can just go to the plus button here and then type in the words that you want. So I've done that already. Uh, I put chlorophyll with an incorrect spelling just there. Uh, to do this we simply click on the plus button just here if you have got lots of students as well if you want a bit more real estate a uh, nice little feature you, you can just uh, sort of hide that away if you want to bring it back you can bring it back like so
So we've got these words in here that we actually want. Uh, so let's see what happens when we actually type in the correct words on a child's device. I was going to move over to this device here. I'm going to start typing uh, a few of these correct words and we can see what happens. Uh, just look around this area uh, just here. So if I just type in, let's say, uh, carbon uh, dioxide is um, something which is used by the plant um, chlorophyll is important you can see as I'm starting to put in these important words and they're, they're part of this they're, they're highlighted you can see where there's been mistakes and, and I sort of press the backspace and put and fix spellings and what have you we can see that the target words are appearing as a total here now look what happens if I type an inappropriate uh, word so I'm just going to put in the incorrect spelling of uh, chlorophyll so there it is and just gonna press space to move it forwards and so you can see the ragging um the uh, color uh, coloring here of these words there so you know not a safeguarding feature but really useful um in helping you keep a track on yeah, when you've got a lot of children in your class, I don't clearly in my example class here, but when you have lots of children in your class, it's a really nice way of taking the temperature of learning uh, without having to go through and check all of your pupils' work. Obviously, you can see it what they're typing. You can then go and jump into their history and, and uh, see all the different things. So I just choose Bob here, for example, and go to history. Uh, you can see uh, all the things that uh, have been sort of typed into here and, and uh, what tools he's been using and uh, all these different things. Okay, so really helpful, really useful little feature, uh, often not thought of, but really nice here inside NetSupport School. In this video, we're going to be exploring how we can manage printing in the classroom. Um, print management is something which is uh, super useful and obviously helpful in managing uh, printing costs. Uh, to manage printing in a sports school is super easy, like most things in a sports school. So to access the print management area, simply move over to the action bar over here. And uh, if you look at the icon, which looks like a printer, uh, then click onto there that then takes you through to your print management view and you'll notice as always uh, you'll still have your sort of standard icons here in the class uh, ribbon but on the right hand side we now have some different things available to us and clearly um, uh, what we want at this stage really is to not have unrestricted printing on um, you know students will print and they might do double click on the print icon by mistake uh, given you often have to double click on files and other things to open it um, they also might uh, sort of be bored and, and click repeatedly because the printing hasn't come out yet all these different things so the first thing you might want to try and do actually is not have unrestricted uh, printing turn on but just simply having block uh, printing and you'll notice straight away it updates here okay um, during the course of the lesson if students are sending things to print uh, they'll total print jobs and pages uh, printed will appear up here um, your printers are located uh, all here on the right hand side in your printer list okay and if you did want to see more in the print queue here you can just adjust uh, the height here by moving things up and down and uh, what have you okay um, one of my favorite features because students do repeatedly press the print button okay and so if you got repeated um, items in the print queue uh, this idea of deleting uh, duplicates uh, is is super uh, useful so just tick the box uh, there in order to um, delete any duplicates that are in the list there you can view the history of what's in there and you can also set some um, printing uh, thresholds um, this can automatically pause um, and delete print jobs uh, at students with certain thresholds uh, sort of put in there um, so yeah a whole bunch of features in here to really help uh, with uh, managing printing in your classroom it may well be that you want to you know have a rule where you check a pupil's work before they actually print it out so you know you could block the printing and then uh, release them uh, on a sort of need by uh, need basis uh, you can pause printing if it was unrestricted and open uh, you can block printing completely uh, so the students can't so that's anything, anything anything to print at all uh, so forth and so on so that's how you manage printing in net support school
In this video, we're going to look at the random student picker. Uh, this is one which allows you to uh, select a student at random in your class for whatever activity you want to be um, doing this. Now, it may well be that you want to do pause, pounce, bounce. It might be that you want to uh, sort of randomly choose children uh, for uh, an activity. Um, Sometimes you want to do that manually yourself because you know who you want to actually ask and, and to have uh, to respond to a question that you might have. But sometimes it's nice to sort of use uh, technology to uh, do that. Um, many times in my class I had uh, students say, Sir, you always pick on me. Well, if you leave it to the uh, um, technology to do that job for you, uh, then obviously that's going to be really useful. To get into the uh, random student picker selection, simply uh, on your um, uh, monitor student machines uh, uh, field here, just go into here, um, nice, nice and easy so you can see um, which students are being picked from here. Go to, you don't have to do it from here, but you can, I, I like to use, do it from the uh, uh, monitoring student machines thing here, because I can't see their screens uh, so easily. Uh, go to the select uh, option just here. You can choose how many students you want to pick. I've only got two students in this demonstration class, so uh, I'll leave it on just one student. There are some other um, options, so you can choose to have a sound played. Um, you can choose sort of logged in, logged out, so forth and so on. Other options to sort of select here. When you're ready to move forwards, uh, simply go onto random students and click onto there. And then it will flop backwards and forwards with some um, markers on the screen and it will choose a, a student. Okay, and the student that was chosen in this case was uh, Bob Smith. So let's just repeat that again. So we simply go random students, it pops the question marks on their screens and then boom, it chooses the students. And this time it's this one here with Amanjeet Q&A, you have been randomly selected. And that is how you use the random student selection tool in NetSupport School. I'm going to be giving you a walkthrough of the Q&A mode or the question and answer modes within Net Support School, which can allow teachers to make their lessons a little bit more competitive and engaging by using what we use and what we refer to as gamifying the lesson. So within the Q&A mode, I can select here. I've got some options at the top, which allows me to choose what question I'm going to send my students and also some settings around whether they get rewards, whether it bounces to other students, if somebody gets it wrong and so forth and so on. We also have the option to include an audio sound, which just makes a couple of sound effects come out of the student devices so that they know they've been selected or they're the ones that have been buzzed in for the question. So as the teacher up here, you've got your question types and there are several to pick from. The first one we're going to look at is the first to answer. So students are asked a question and it's very similar to the popular game Buzz, where one of them will buzz in and the quickest one gets selected to then answer the question. Now, as the teacher, I can give them some thinking time. If it's perhaps a math lesson and requires some calculation, we can give them, say, 10, 20 seconds to think about it. And then we've got time to answer the question. So the students will all get an option to buzz after their 25 seconds. If they get it correct, they can earn a star, which you can see in the top left of their thumbnails, which is also displayed on the student screens. If they were to get it wrong, we can have the option that it will automatically bounce to the next student so it moves on and you can choose if you want that to continue bouncing to every student until somebody gets it right. Now, in the options here, I do have the ability to adjust whether students get a reward for getting a question correct. If a student gets a question correct, they are then excluded from further questions to give the rest of the class a chance to answer a question themselves. You can also have the students lose a reward if they get it answered incorrectly. And also, if they're incorrect, they will be locked out from further questions as well. You can display a results screen for your students' questions. And this is really good because it shows who's earned the most points. You can, however, define that it's only the top three or maybe the five students only showing the top results because you may not want to show the students that got the lowest scores. So now in here, I can select OK and I'm going to verbally ask the questions uh, to the students and I'm going to hit go. And now on the students devices, they will see that there is a thinking time countdown. Once that countdown is completed, the think button will change to answer. Uh, I should have done it less than 25 seconds. Uh, and now when it's completed, they will have the option to answer. So I've buzzed in as one student and you can see that Matt Smith, the student, was the first one to buzz. 
So now he's going to verbally give me his answer. And if he's incorrect, it's now bounced to Bob. And now Bob can answer. He gets it correct. So he's now earned a star and he's excluded from further questions moving forwards. And then we can press stop. So that is the first to answer. Uh, next we can do enter and answer and again we can do the thinking time which I'll make a bit shorter this time uh, we can also give them a time limit to enter the same options as before about earning rewards or bouncing and then we press ok and all the students will then answer this question so I'm going to again verbally ask them a question uh, what is 10 times 9 the answer being 90 let's hope you get that right now you can hide the answer because if you're using a projector or smart board you don't want students to see you typing in the answer uh, there you can also specify whether it's a case sensitive match as well so if not we can allow for slight margin of error on the spelling whether it's maybe like the name of a capital city that they're just uh, slightly spelling wrong so now we can press go all the students on their devices have their thinking time yet again and at this point now they've got the ability to enter the answer into the taskbar into the text box even sorry and you can see if they get it correct or not The green shows that Matt got it correct and Bob got it wrong. And again, a star can be earned there and you can see the scores of the students. Next up, we have got a potluck or random selection. And this will essentially allow me to pick one or multiple students at random and ask them a question. So there's no favoritism, there's no preference. We're just randomly selecting people or multiples. So I can then do that and it's going to bounce between the students and I'm going to ask them a question and if you get it right, they get an answer uh, uh, as before, a star as before. Well, moving on, uh, we do have the ability similar to the first to answer and entering answer and we can do them as team based questions. Now, as an example, I've got a group up here for additional support. So one of my students is an additional support versus the whole classroom. Now, this actually allows you to potentially set up other groups like Team A and Team B. And therefore, when we do Team First to Answer, you've got the option in there, uh, in here, sorry, not in there. You've got the option, OK, then do Randomly Assign Team. And so you can split your class into two, maybe three teams at random. You can allow students to select their own teams by separating the different team names with a comma. And you can also use current groups. If you've got multiple groups with the students specified in them already, like Team A and A Team B, uh, it will allow you to use your existing groups in there. So then we can now run our first to answer, select OK and select OK in there. And it's going to show us the team summary. And then we go. So we're now asking a question and the students are technically in Team 1 and Team 2. Let's see, we've only got two students, but when you've got a classroom full of 30, it's a lot easier to see that visibly. And then somebody can answer. Somebody can answer first and second. They got it correct, so their team get the point. You can actually see the star listed against the team name at the top as well. And then you can go on to the next round and ask a further question to that. Very similar again, we can do the team-based enter and answer, which works very much the same way again. Assigning randomly teams, letting them choose or even keep the current teams. And you can choose whether you want to reset the points from the previous round that we've just done or whether we can keep the current teams and continue. Now on the enter and answer basis, instead of the verbal questions and response basis, there are the settings modules there and the volume. Again, we've already covered those. And that is the Q&A module, essentially. And you can see on the student screen how many stars they have earned throughout the quiz. I'm going to be showing you the student survey tool in NetSupport School, which is a great tool for your teachers to be able to gauge student feedback, ask questions and prompt class discussion. Now, by selecting my survey tool down here, I can see my students in my classroom. I've got the ability to set some questions and push them out to the students. So by selecting here, this allows me to manage the different survey questions that I can send them. It could be something like, what is the square root of 144 in a maths lesson? And you can get the answers, different answers uh, for them. For example, it could be a science lesson. It could also be used as a well-being tool. So at the beginning of a lesson, teachers can ask the class, how are you today? And engage students in a conversation. The feedback from their students, getting a general feeling for the day. 
If any students acknowledge that they're having a bad day, that's useful knowledge at the start of a lesson to understand that students might not be having the best uh, start to the day or performing to their best so you can help them in your role as a tutor. So in here, I can manage and I can create custom responses. I can add a new question in here, type it in. What is your favorite subject at school? And in the responses, we can do custom responses. So I could say maths, English, science, PE, add that. And now we've got a question in there to use at our disposal. So from here, I can then select on the drop down which question I would like to share to my students. So I'm going to have, uh, how are you today? It's down here as well. So you can type it in down in the bottom section and I'm going to issue that out to all my students. And as you see on their screens, they've got the ability to say OK, good and bad. Now that I've selected those answers, we're going to see down here the results of how our students answered the survey. This is really useful for us to see who's answered and what way and uh, what students it was. Uh, now, this question I've used is uh, uh, here as a well-being tool, but it could be a way to understand if any students need any additional support or so forth and so on. You could even use it as a confidence checker. And if anybody isn't feeling too confident on a topic that you've just explained, you could then use this to put them into an additional support group. So I've got a student here in an additional support uh, group and that will allow me to support that student remotely with sharing my screen, launching the right resources to help them and guide them through the lesson. Additionally, with our students where it shows our survey results, there is the ability to automatically group students by their responses. So again, where you've got a group of students that are confident and a group of students that aren't confident, we can automatically group them together and now you've got a way of directly supporting that group of students based upon their self-selected confidence level. Depending on the question that you've asked your students, you can choose to show them the results and those will appear in a pie chart format for the students to see. Depending on what the question is, it may be an opportunity to spark a class discussion. You could, for example, ask student A, why did you answer and justify your answer? And then student B, who answered something else, could ask them why they feel differently. And this just prompts a little bit more engagement in the lesson. So, now I've finished that, I've got a survey list up here and I can store and load in surveys from a list in the future. This is really useful in schools because it allows teachers to share survey questions that they're using, uh, not having to duplicate and replicate additional workload. You can create one long list and then you can issue that out to everybody else who may need those as well. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the feedback and well-being options. Um, previously, um, earlier in the uh, uh, video, you'll have seen how you do feedback and well-being checks in easy mode, um, but it's done slightly differently um, with inside the more advanced console. You'll notice we have the feedback and well-being tab up here and click onto there and you get a brand new ribbon, uh, which gives you the option to do the same uh, things as you've you'd done before, basically. Uh, so if you hit, were to hit the feedback and well-being option there, that requests feedback or check students' well-being. So click onto here and then you get the same window as you'd seen previously. So you can ask students a question. Uh, which is optional, you can have, just ask them verbally in the class. Uh, you choose the option that you want uh, in terms of the response. You can uh, anonymize the results here should you want to as well. Um, pick the one you want, hit OK, and then as before, uh, the students get their uh, things appear on the screen. You can see that having appeared on the student screens here. Uh, they choose their response and um, on our screen we then see what those responses are. Anonymized is turned on so we don't know who has said what. Okay, Remember we can view that as a chart um, or as a list like so. We can choose to save that or print it if we want to or if that is done uh, then it could be a, a simple close button. Remember we can use this for feedback as well as well-being checks. Uh, so you know we, in the um, earlier example we talked about ranking confidence with topics. So you know, how confident one to five are you with five being I'm really confident and one being not that confident. On the topic of photosynthesis uh, the students could then self-select and that'll give you a good temperature test on all of that. OK, uh, so that's how you do the feedback and well-being options inside NetSupport School. Uh, there are some other options for sending stickers uh, to students as well. Uh, so if I just uh, select this uh, student here and I can send a sticker to that student, which represents how happy I am with them. And and um, it could be a whole other 
a bunch of reasons. There's lots of different stickers to choose from. Uh, do the uh, send sticker, and uh, that sticker then appears on their screen. And it could be, you know, a nice response, a little way of a little visual note to help uh, your pupils know a you're checking in on them, um, uh, and also um, yeah some little visual uh, feedback um, that you get within their work. And what you'll notice is that those um, different uh, stickers not only um, appear as a little pop up on the screen, see nice and large, it then also appears on the student toolbar uh, just up here that you can see just here. So there you go. Um, we've got the option to, to give rewards and things as well for students um, here in the feedback and well-being section. Um, you can just choose a student and then go give a reward and that does a similar sort of thing uh, to, to the stickers. You can see the uh, award has gone on to uh, this student screen. And just like you saw with the sticker going here, the stars then go over to here. OK, uh, you can also choose to remove rewards and uh, remove all rewards and then clear things and go back to ground zero as well, so forth and so on. But that's the feedback and well-being options inside Net Support School. In this video, we're going to explore the student toolbar. Now, you'll have seen this appearing in well all these thumbnails and all of the other videos uh, we've had where we um, jump in on the student screen. But uh, let's have a little exploration of what happens and what you can see um, on the student toolbar. So let's just jump onto Bob Smith's uh, screen for a second. Let's just make that nice and big uh, so you can see that as large as we can. Uh, go full screen. There we go. So when we're here, um, inside um, um, uh, Bob's uh, screen. Let's just move this out of the way a second. Nice little floating toolbar. So when you're full screen, you can uh, um, sort of fiddle around and move around and uh, expand the toolbar and, and close and so forth and so on. Um, let's have a little look at the toolbar and work from left to right. So on the left hand side, you'll see any stickers you've been sent. You can see a little icon which represents uh, the students. The name of the student as registered in the beginning of the class and it gives you the time, the date and any rewards uh, that have been sent across to the students. It will also have some information that you've entered, such as your room, your name, the class name, so forth and so on. All useful reference points for a student to have, but the most useful area really resides over here on the right hand side. So uh, the first thing uh, we see here are the um, section where students can access any resources. If you shared resources uh, with your students during a course of a lesson, then uh, a, they, they can go into here and access those resources. Nothing for this lesson and it tells you when you hover over. It also gives you an idea of what your learning objectives are. If you click onto here, you get a little pop-up that comes up and tells you what the objectives and the learning outcomes are just here. Happy days. Click on the X to close that. Alongside, beyond there, we then have device control. And the iconography on here represents any kind of controls um, that are being put into place on the device. Uh, so... This one here shows that CDs are not allowed. This one represents that no USBs uh, are, are allowed. Um, so that's a really useful uh, sort of reference point just there. This um, with the tick shows that keyboard monitoring status is turned on. Um, the, the little tick uh, represents that. Uh, next to this, we've got the uh, print status. The line through it, strike through, uh, means the printing is currently blocked. But if it wasn't blocked, uh, students could click on here and see the print queue and the status of their printing um, if that was opened up. Alongside from that, we have application status and uh, haven't got anything there turned on, nor have I got anything turned on with the um, uh, internet access as well. So it's unrestricted. And one thing to be mindful of, you know, if, if your students are working through things, and I recognise that this is open from earlier, uh, where uh, we were doing the uh, student off task, but let's just close uh, those down for a second. Okay. Um, but... Um, yeah, when you turn on um, limiting of um, uh, websites, so if there's an unapproved site open at that time, it will close those those 
those tabs down. So just be mindful of that. Um, and if you have got restricted sites, um, then uh, you get a web page comes up and it tells you, you know, what is the the, the approved sites on the list. Normally it's got uh, branding on it and things. Um, it isn't at the moment because I've actually um, made the uh, internet unrestricted again. Um, but that would normally come up with the Netsport logo uh, for, for Netsport School. And then an uh, uh, icon here representing the website and then the link that is, is the allowed link. OK, uh, so that's what will appear normally in those circumstances. Um, alongside from the Internet and the application status, uh, you have the journal where you can add notes and things into your journal. Uh, these two options here are, are uh, useful for um, students in particular. This one here, uh, request to chat. So students can't just start chatting and just start bombarding you uh, with loads and loads of uh, questions. They can request a chat and that will appear on your dashboard so you can then respond back to your um, to your students. Uh, alternatively, uh, on the end here, you have a help request. Um, so that's like a virtual hand in the air uh, to uh, get your attention so you can then go and either in person visit that students at their desk and give them a hand uh, or then invoke a chat with them and start having a conversation around it. So there you go, that's the uh, features and functionalities of the student toolbar in Net Support School. Hi and welcome to this part of the video where we're going to explore the student journal inside NetSupport School. Now this is an absolutely lovely feature. Often there are different types of resources that you want your students to have access to during the course of a given lesson. It could be there are specific websites you want them to explore. It could be that there's a resource, an image you want them to reference. Uh, it could be a formula. It could be some general notes, uh, some quotes you want them to work around uh, or think about, lots of different types of, of collateral that su will support the learning activity you've got taking place. And all of these things can fit inside your student journal. To create a journal, well, you've got to start it. So first of all, make sure you're on the journal uh, tab on the um, option just here where I'm harnessing at the moment. And that will bring up the journal ribbon. So the first thing you want to do is go to start. OK, um, so click on start um, and uh, you can um, start one by clicking on here. But I'm going to start a brand new one here. When we do that brand new one, uh, I'm going to give a new one. Uh, Seven Biology um, Live, we'll call this one just because we're doing this one live. OK, you can pop in the class name if you want to. Um, uh, Y7 Bio, let's call that one. Hit OK, and that journal is now starting. OK, and you can have some controls with that. So you can view it at any time um, as a PDF here. OK, uh, if you put something in by mistake or you think it isn't quite right, you can uh, undo the last ad. You can stop it at any time. Uh, you can choose to print it out if you want to. Um, and you can synchronize uh, this and the students' journals because students can add things into the journal themselves too. OK, so you can synchronize uh, that content too. What you can do is you can add the student register to your journal if you want that to be something that appears in there. You can go into notes and add a note uh, by going onto notes, click on here, and you can type the notes and you can send that to a selected students or to all uh, connected uh, students like so. OK, so the note could be um, this is a note, for example. Hit OK. There we go brilliant stuff. In a similar way, you can add a screenshot uh, of an application on your desktop. You can also send through the approved websites list to the journal. If you've completed a survey and you want to send those results through for whatever reason uh, to your pupils, then you can do that there. And you can also add a, a targeted word list uh, to the journal. So clicking onto here, uh, it could be these, these key words that you want uh, students to reference in the lesson. So uh, let's put in um, things like chlorophyll, um, carbon dioxide, etc, etc. Again, selected students or all connected students. Hit OK. And all these things then go through into um, the journal. 
lesson, okay? So when you're finished, you can hit stop at the end of the lesson and that will just uh, stop the journal and make it fully uh, um, visible and viewable and things. And the beautiful thing is this journal is now available to your uh, pupils as well, okay? So as it's being worked through, uh, they can view it um, on their screens uh, inside uh, their journal. Okay, so the journal is over here. Um, they can add notes and put things into it themselves and they can access the journal uh, themselves too through here. So that uh, is the student journal feature in Net Support School, a really good way of um, getting information uh, for individual people to, if individuals need it, or for the whole class as well. Don't forget, of course, you can sort of send files to uh, students using the tool as well. Uh, you can use a file transfer feature here, for example. Okay, so that there are you know, other ways in which you can share resources with um, students in the class, uh, but a nice way of doing that in a, in a one-stop shop document, uh, like I say, is the student journal, which is well worth um, exploring if you haven't had a play with it before so i hope you enjoyed that and give it a go let us know um, at netsupportsoftware.com or on our socials at net support group on x net support on linkedin um, but uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed that Thank you for taking the time to watch the various chapters in this video uh, exploring many of the different features with inside net support school there are far too many to cover in one video, unfortunately. Uh, but thank you for um, exploring the things we felt would be really, really useful to you. Uh, if you wanted to look forward and, and look to more features of functionality, we definitely direct you to have a look at the Work Planner. Uh, the Work Planner is a great place where you can do things like send work and collect work. Um, you've got options in here around student resources. You can even create uh, your own lesson plans where you can automate things to go across a lesson where um, it will just open the tools you want the students to use like notepad for example or word or uh, block the internet or send a quiz or all these different things you can do all of that inside your um, lesson plan planning tool and uh, here's one uh, we made earlier for example something else to consider as well further exploration is uh, the administer section Again, really, really useful tools in here for doing things like powering on and powering off and rebooting student devices, logging them in and out and managing the accounts on the device. There's a whole bunch of things with uh, different settings. There's tutor assistance. Uh, you can go in and, and work on your replay files from when you've been showing. There are lots and lots of things you can explore beyond what we've shared in this video today. And if you're looking to do some customization to make it work for you, uh, please do have a little play around up here where you can actually customize this little tool toolbar you have access to up here and you can just customize uh, that um, in, in really easy ways and uh, just, just choose, choose the things you want to appear uh, if you want something to disappear and uh, you can just uh, tap on it and uh, it will remove it from uh, the list as you can see me doing just here so another little thing to explore just up here and finally you might like to have a little look at how you can customize uh, the action bar here um, down the side you can also, in the view area, uh, do things like have the group bar open if you've got different groups set up. You've got the action bar setting, uh, so you can hide that if you want to, to give you some more visual real estate if you want to. And uh, You can also, if you want to, turn the student toolbar on and off if it's not something which you want them to really see uh, and things, you can turn that off uh, on their devices too. We should see that update on their screens. There we go, uh, any second there. You can even, if you want to, brand your background as you want to. Um, with a file of your own choosing, uh, clearing the background there too if you want. There's a lot uh, that you can play around with beyond what we've shared today uh, in this video. I hope you find it super useful. We'd love to uh, hear from you about how you're using our software. If you've got some feature requests, we do try to co-produce our software. If you've got something which you feel that would be really useful for us to have in NetSupport School, uh, then please do let us know. We're easily discoverable. Uh, we're on netsupportsoftware.com or you can get in touch with us on our socials on X we are net support group uh, on LinkedIn we are net support and uh, you can find us on other socials like Facebook and Instagram and so pop and so on as well listen it's been really delightful spending some time with you showcasing some of these fantastic features that support teaching and learning you know technology in the classroom it's too important but too expensive to leave to chance and we love the fact that netsport school really does help you with your job of teaching young people and you know what better job is there so listen thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video thanks <laughs>